I have just played the most important game of 2016, without a doubt. Like, I'm pretty certain there isn't going to be a game that gets released that is as important as Mafia 3. If you've been watching my videos up until now, you'll know that we arrived in London to play Mafia 3. I did a vlog just before we got to play the game, but we got hands-on. I spent about three or four hours, and it is mind-blowing. And I just have to share this with you. This game is just, it's crazy. You play a character called Lincoln Clay. He's a mixed-race uh, character. The game is set in 1968 in a town called New Bordeaux, uh, which is kind of their version of New Orleans. So it's it's politically charged. It's a, it's an area with a lot of racial tension. And as South Africans, and I know a lot of South Africans are watching this video, the, we come from such a disturbing, raci racially broken background, and it affects us to this day. I, I love the fact that when I started the demo, you know, started off the game with, with this disclaimer that, you know, they wanted fair representation of people of that time, um, how it was. Because if you ignore that stuff, if you ignore the, the racial tension and the abuse, uh, then you just end up whitewashing the game. You're just cutting out a huge segment of other people's experience of that. It's a lot of games do this, a lot of films do this, and the developers decided that they weren't going to do that. They were going to tell an honest story that was set in that time. And not only that, they were going to put it on the, the forefront. It's front and center. The front of the game, they have the text, and it says, um, we want to uh, acknowledge what happened then, and uh, do those people a service, and the people that suffered then, and the people that suffer today. That's like, and I was like, there are people still suffering because of this, and for a game to use a, a super cool environment to, to do that, um, I'm, I'm so excited. If you've never played a Mafia game, you've got to. Um, Mafia 2 was cool, uh, Mafia 3 just is it's just they've polished everything. If you love GTA, it's kind of like GTA. It's an open world game, uh, you drive around in cars, you take up different areas in the game, you take out districts and then you, you build these leaders that you can place in those districts. And while doing that, building up your empire. So you start off this criminal empire. That's what Mafia is all about. So you play as Lincoln Clay, something dramatic happens, don't want to give it away, and you kind of you kind of feel for him, like like he's What's happened to him is pretty rubbish, and you uh, start off ground one. He, he's just come back from Vietnam as well, so he's a war vet. That actually, I mean, even that, having him as a soldier, a previous soldier, gives him a lot of context on how to use weapons, uh, why he's, a, he's so aggressive, because, you, you know, a lot of these games, you play as this really aggressive protagonist who doesn't feel like he's ag aggressive you know, well, there's any motivation to be aggressive, or knows how to be aggressive, but he, but he's trained. So then, after that big dramatic event, you, you pretty much start from nothing, but start building up your empire, taking on the districts and taking on um, the Southern Union, which is the game's version of the uh, Ku Klux Klan. I'm actually not sure if the Southern Union actually existed. There are different criminal industries like the sex trade and drugs, and your job is to take them over, boardwalk empire, right? Like. Uh, in, in many ways, so it, it's it's really cool. It, and not only is the gameplay tight, the shooting is incredible. I love the stealth. Uh, I, I, afterwards, I read a, lot, a couple of people's reviews saying that the stuff was too easy. That, that's my kind of stealth. I feel like I like stealth where you feel confident being stealthy. It's, I think that there are difficulty settings anyway that you can that you can rank up and rack up. But I like having uh, stealth that makes you feel empowered when you do it. Um, so that was really cool to play. I actually prefer playing stuff, but you can go in guns blazing uh, if you want to. Even the world is just so colorful. Like it's just like when you walking through a, na a white neighborhood, for instance. I, f I felt there were things like there were uh, people walking past that were you know they use racial slurs um, at your character, and you genuinely get angry. You're like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just walking through here. How must people feel who are getting this kind of stuff on the daily? Just like just being beaten very slowly, it's like that, you know, that, that torture technique they say when they drip water on your head, you know, it's that kind of thing, it's just like, eventually I got so mad with, with, these, with these NPCs in this certain district, because I was just like, S -s stop calling me names, like, like, you have no right to dislike me, because I haven't done anything to you, and I think a lot of people feel that way. In real life, people of color, also, just driving around when you're in those neighborhoods and you're a black man behind a steering wheel, the cops, you know in video games when you get like the, 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 the you're being watched marker, it's just, it's like the, it's like a little curvy thing with an arrow on it. Um, when you park off at a set of traffic lights you, and you're a black man behind a wheel, the cops are, are watching you, that marker pops up, they're close to you, and you just feel exposed, and you know, it, it doesn't, yeah, it's, it's so good, it's so good how they've put those used game mechanics to make you feel that way. 
Playboy kind of have a deal with them where they have magazines that are, that are like scattered around the world and I chatted to one of the writers about it um, which, which was strange because it's not only just play Playboys, it's um, Sol, one of the big enemies in the game, he puts up these posters everywhere with um, semi nude woman on them or nude woman on them and they're very sexualized and like in some contexts I suppose that's fine or whatever. In this context you free sex slaves and uh, right outside are these collectible pictures that you can look at and ogle and I think it's kind of double standards where you understand the plight of a person of color who is oppressed and then you go into this environment and you free you know sex slaves who are oppressed and then have these other versions of them on the wall uh, kind of contradicts it, you know what I mean? It contradicts what's happening in that room, uh, or what you're doing as somebody that's trying to liberate people. It just doesn't gel, it doesn't fit for me. The writers seem to explain to me that when I when I spoke to them about it that they those things are generally bad because they're like the, the posters are gifts from the, the bad guy, Sol. So like you kind of dismantle them like you do the posters in Far Cry, you know? But I don't know, that's not really convincing to me, like, I, it, it's not done like that, it's not executed like that, and the, the Playboy magazines in and around the environment, like, kind of don't really make contextual sense. They said that they pulled a lot of articles, and Playboy was very, like, uh, influential at that time when it came to a lot of their written work, uh, specifically, but having, uh, like, centerpieces with, like, really high-res pictures that you can zoom in, like, just doesn't make any sense, like, why have that in there? Again, it presumes a, a guy is playing this game and there's a good chance that a lot of women are going to play this. And, and in fact, you know, statistics recently, it's like nearly half of the people are going to play this are women. So it's kind of weird that they put this, this in there. Anyway, I'm trying to kind of forgive them for that because I'm just so impressed with what they're doing uh, with, with the, the other front. It's just, it's just mind blowing. The parts that I played, lots of really cool action, lots of cool like things to do in the world. Nothing seems too far away. I find a lot of big open world games are just like, you've got to travel for long periods of time to get to anywhere in the city, but they've made it very dense and populated and you're going from mission to mission very quickly because everything is progressing around you and you're pushing yourself out into the other districts. I loved it. I had a really good time playing it. I, I couldn't, I was actually disappointed I had to leave. I really wanted to play more. I can't wait until it launches 7th of October 2016. So that's uh, not far away, not far away. We're talking like two weeks. Um, and really, I do feel it's the most important game to come out this year. They're doing something very different and I'm, I'm impressed with that. And I think we as a gaming community need to honor that. Like it's, it's, we need to, we need to respect decisions like creative decisions like that. And as South Africans, like this is something we should care about. This is something that we should stand up for and understand and grapple with because we have a legacy of extreme racism and it, it's, it's, it permeates systematically and you can see that in a game and it's like, it never just disappears. You're just you're changing the laws. doesn't make it go away. It doesn't change the hearts and minds of people. That racism still sits with every single one of us and we've got to root it out and we need to fix it. It's not good. It's not productive and we're not perfect and we can't sit and argue and justify us not being racist because that's not going to make us better people. What's going to make us better people is going, what is the, the what is that element in us and how do we unwind it and get rid of it and it's yeah man like i this is something i feel strongly about i often don't get to talk about this kind of stuff on my channel um and having a game like this come out means that i can afford to and it means that i can um and uh, we are south africans and we should stand together and we're members of the human race and we should treat other people with the same kind of respect so Thank you, 2K. That is, uh, yeah, it was, thank you, 2K. Thank you for sending me up here and letting me play this this game. Um, this video isn't sponsored anyway, um, other than me being here, uh, which is cool. But it, like, uh, honestly, I, I, I really want to do a heartfelt video about it because it means a lot to me in, in that way. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, positivity, please. Like, support one another. We, this, I have a multi-racial audience. Everyone is in here. We want to have a good time. We want to share video games for everybody. This isn't just about you um, or me. This is about everybody getting involved and having a good time. We're a universal community. Uh, I want to know what you think. And if you're as ex excited as I am about stuff like this, and if you know of any other games that are doing this kind of thing, please drop them down in the, in the description or in the comments below. I really appreciate that. Share this video like and subscribe I'll see you in the next one as always what must you do <laughs> High five
have a stranger. Cheers. Adios.